All right. Welcome, everybody. A late start today here for the podcast. I don't usually do it this late in the afternoon, but uh, yeah, errands and stuff. It is what it is. Anyway, I, I have to start off with this today because this has been an ongoing topic, something that we've talked about at length. Um, we have issues in this country when it comes to labor force. We've all seen it. You go into McDonald's, uh, you go into a Starbucks, you go into a restaurant, you go into retail, and you're like, where is everybody? Where are the workers? And then you'll have signs up there. Please bear with us. We have a labor crisis. Please bear with us. It's been going on for a while. And we're told, oh, you know, again, you get the, well, you know, a lot of people have long COVID. Whatever. Yeah, that, that whole long COVID thing, it's, it's a bit of a myth, but I, I'm not going to get into that today. Anyway, uh, I'm going to hand it to New York Post broke this down, basically echoing what we've been saying uh, in regards to handouts and giveaways here in this pro, uh, country. Uh, the fact that you can, um, you can do pretty darn well. You can do pretty darn well not working in the United States. Yeah, it's a wonder why. And I know this is kind of off the beaten track to some degree. Um, the reason why we have the flow of migrants into this country is they can get a job or they don't, can't get a job. They're getting money. And that's the way it is. Okay. Um, story. Most Americans believe, as we do, in a reliable government safety net in America. Said that again and again and again. No problem with helping people out. Stuff happens. We're supposed to help out our fellow Americans, get them back on their feet. But um, hmm, let's look at some of the numbers here. Uh, families earning a half a million dollars a year can receive Obamacare subsidies. Half a million dollars a year and you're still getting your fellow taxpayers to help pay for your health insurance. Uh, some states, unemployment insurance benefits can be the equivalent to a job with the annual pay of $100,000. Yeah, um, again, they're getting into this and they're breaking this down. And, and again, as some of the programs out there, the SNAP program, that, that's means tested. Um, to some degree, some of the uh, government subsidies for housing section eight is, but, um, yeah, the uh, committee to unleash prosperity found out in 24 States unemployment benefits and Obamacare subsidies for a family of four with no one working are the annualized equivalent of at least the national median household. A family making almost a quarter of a million dollars annually still qualifies for Obamacare subsidies in every state every state if your family is making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year you're still getting subsidized for obamacare in a dozen states the value of unemployment benefits and obamacare subsidies exceed the salary and benefits of the average teacher construction worker electrician firefighter truck driver machinist or retail associate in New Jersey, family of four can receive benefits equal to an annualized earned income of $108,000 with no one working. In Connecticut and New Jersey, a family earning $300,000 a year can receive Obamacare subsidies. I, I, I mean, wow, you can go on and on and on um, with this. And again, what do you think happens? Yeah, I, I understand unemployment benefits. Um, unemployment benefits only go for a certain period of time. I, I understand that. But if you don't think people understand how to game the system, oh, my unemployment benefits ran out. I'm, I'm going to go work for a while, work for the minimum amount, and then leave your job or get yourself fired. Not to mention the billions of dollars in waste and fraud in these programs. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. Here's a breakdown based upon, I'm, I'm going to just do a few of the states here. Um, we'll do, uh, we'll do Washington state of Washington. Um, you get an income equivalent. This is, uh, again, this is not COVID. It's not COVID benefits, any of that nonsense. None of the supplemental stuff. This is right now. Okay. Affordable care act subsidies and unemployment benefits. 
state of Washington, it's an income equivalent of $122,653 a year. That's the equivalent of making $31 an hour. Massachusetts comes in second, $117,029 an hour. New Jersey is third, $108,000, $27 an hour. Uh, the bottom one is uh, Mississippi at $37,500, which is the equivalent of $9 an hour. Um, at some point in time, people, you know, we, we have to have an unemployment system I think I mentioned yeah, the prime minister, the new prime minister uh, of Italy, Maloney, actually, she came out and said this. She said, this is ridiculous. I said, if, if there's a job available, you better take it. You better take it. Yeah, I, I, I know it's kind of mean, but yeah, yeah, she whiz. you know, um, hunger is a pretty good motivator if you ask me. Oh, I don't want to do that job. I, I don't give a shit. Okay, if there's a job available, you take it. Now, obviously, there's certain situations, care providers, whatever it may be. But um, God, you, you, you don't think people can game the system? You don't think they understand how this works? Not to mention the fact, do you think that the government can actually keep up? Huh? I, I got a kick at us speaking with my accountant, but the IRS has... They've lost my tax return um, on several occasions, and we resend it in, and we find that somehow it gets misplaced, or they file for the wrong year. Um, you, you think that you think that these government workers are going to follow up with this stuff? Now, I was laughing about this the other day. Again, I moved into this house about two years ago. About two years ago, and the breed did the outside, you know, made, the, you know, did the whole yard, graded it, did all these things, put a pool in the backyard. Um, yeah, I got the permit for the pool. It's all in, everything taken, uh, taken care of. Do you, do you think that they've come and inspected it? They're supposed to. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Oh, you know, those government workers down there at the town. Not that I care. I mean, it's, they don't want to come inspect it. They don't have to come inspect it. I, I could give a shit. Oh, it was COVID, man. It was COVID. We didn't have to work. We're sitting on our asses watching Netflix. Oh, give me a freaking break. I, again, I, I, it's frustrating for people that actually work for a living that get up at the crack of dawn, if not before, putting in 8, 10, 12-hour days, working their ass off for their families, doing the right thing. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, and I... Probably shouldn't have said this, you know, it's talking about, you know, immigrants coming here. I don't think the immigrants are coming here for government handouts. I think they're coming here to work. I, I, I do. And, and I'm sorry. This is what I feel. I, I think they look at Americans as fat and lazy. Fat and lazy. And they'll come here and they'll. And, and, and I'm being honest with you. I don't care at this point in time. I really don't. I really, like I said, I, I, I'd be passing out working papers left and right. I would, because you're not going to get any change. You already started giving these things out. Nobody in Washington's going to do a damn thing about it. Hey, you're taking money away. Oh, you're so mean. Get your ass up and get yourself a freaking job. Get yourself a job. And these are the same people that want the child tax credits. And then they'll start breeding, even though they can't afford their brood. And they want other people to pay for it because they know they're going to get more handouts and giveaways based upon the kids they have. And then their kids see their parents and live by the example of their lazy ass parents. And whoop, the cycle repeats. At some point in time, you got to break the cycle, do we not? Some point in time. The cycle needs to be broken. I just, um, I, I just don't see it happening anytime soon. I, I, I really don't. I'm being honest with you. Anyway, uh, all right. Let's get to some financial stuff today. Uh, I used to do a, uh, it was a regular column I did for a while. I stopped doing it. Um, in my uh, in the Markowski uh, newsletter that we've been doing since the 1990s, and again. Newsletter, get to our website, sign up for it there. I just do this little bit. And it, you still have archives up there on our website at watchdogonwallstreet.com. Um, I have a, a section there. It's called Wall Street Fraud. And I would do this thing called the Fraud Files. 
and I would do little stories and whatnot of all the ripoffs and scams that I was seeing and making fun of them and, you know, what was taking place. And um, I do some fraud files today. And the thing about the fraud files and the things that we talk about, you know, we talk about them after the fact. But if you've been paying close attention, we warned you that all of these things were going to happen. We did. Like I said, I, I got to start selling T-shirts on my website. Don't doubt me. Don't doubt me. Just, just listen. Listen, and you're, you're going to be better off. But again, okay, everybody's so much smarter. Um, hundreds of companies that went public when the market for initial public offerings was booming have suffer, suffered such sharp reversals that they now face a stark reality. Their shares may never recover. Wait for it here. And again, this is the Wall Street Journal, uh, shockingly enough, not fully understanding what this means. I, I, I don't know this writer. Corey Drybush. She does, she, Corey doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. Well, I'll explain why. More than one in four of the nearly 600 companies that went public via a traditional IPO in 2020 or 2021, including... Oat milk maker, Oatly Group, <laughs> Lone Depot, they uh, trade at less than $2 a share. Um, when a stock trades below a dollar on average for 30 days or other requirements aren't met, the company's issued a warning by its stock exchange, then has 180 days to bring the stock price back up. If it fails to do so, it is delisted or moved to the pink sheets. Hmm. That is bound to send an alarming signal to investors, customers, and employees, especially when it comes so soon after an IPO. Um, you know what might be a concern to investors and employees is your freaking company's business model. Now, I was going to yell. I was about ready to go on an epic Sam Kinison rant, but I, I'm, I'm going to pull it back in here. Okay, I'm going to pull it back in. Um, if these companies were worth anything else people would put money into them they'd see them as a value someone might step in and buy the entire float out don't you think but the reality is they were shit to begin with and they're shit now oatly yeah yeah the big sales pitch yes you're but you're not you're not drinking cow milk and you're saving the environment yeah you have to get into the black at some point in time, too. You, you do understand that, right? Oh, I can go on and on and on. Um, we were, oh, corporate executives and bankers are work on these IPOs. They don't, they're not holding their breath for a recovery in the market anytime soon, nor do they give a shit, Corey, sweetheart. Um, they don't care. They got paid already. Don't you understand this? OK, all they need to do is to keep the stock price up for a certain period of time, blow out the insiders, OK, blow out the powers that be and they're done. Well, again, you know, Jordan Belfort, Stratton Oakmont, we're pikers compared to these big investment bankers, small potatoes. This is the same scam. Except it's legit. It's legit because it's talked about on the business networks. Right. And it's got Morgan Stanley behind it or Goldman Sachs or Merrill Lynch or one of the other crooked firms that are out there. It's a scam. Always was. Okay. It would, I, could, I could look at these perspectives. I could take a look. We've gone over them here on the program. We've talked about them here on the program and laugh. At some point in time, you have to be able to read through the BS. And guess what? You know what? I'm going to be honest. There's been a couple occasions, a couple occasions where I was wrong. I was wrong. And the, the company made it. It didn't go like gangbusters, but it didn't go under. So what? So what? You missed that one. Okay? You, you take a look at the numbers here and the types of losses that people are taking. And they got another story here on SPACs. SPAC winter accelerates. <laughs> Again, you want these numbers? 
Yeah, again, we'll file this under don't doubt me. Uh, where are the numbers here? I have them. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. Here we go. They're talking about the, the volume of these things that are below their offering price. It's, it's staggering. Okay. 297 SPACs, 297 of them, um, 278 of them are trading below their IPO price. Um, 94% are trading below $10, uh, 222 are trading below $5. So that's 75%. Uh, 72 of them are trading below a buck. The winners out there, uh, positive returns, 19 out of 297. Yeah, are they saying the Hunger Games? May the odds always be in your favor. Yeah, uh, not so much. Not so much. Okay. All right. Um, story today. Again, Alyssa Finley. This is an editorial in the Wall Street Journal today. Um, where was Biden's SEC sheriff on Sam Bankman Freed? Uh, Alicia. That's her name. Alicia. Um, there's no such thing. Okay. And, and again, I, I've been really hitting home with this as of late here on the program. There's no such thing. It, it's a, the myth that there is a sheriff on Wall Street. It is a myth. It's a lie. It's not true. They don't exist. They don't. Give me one instance. Give me one instance where the SEC... NSDR, the old version of today's FINRA, actually stopped a crime, an investment fraud, before it actually happened. Name it one time. Name it once when they've been a deterrent. Now, at least in her, her column here is, well, you know, Gary Gensler said that he could, he could, you know, he could handle this and he could be on top of it. No, he can't. No, he can't, can't do it for crying out loud. I watched Ro Canna in Congress, the California congressman, rip in. We talked about it here on the, uh, the program. I forget the name of the gentleman. that was actually explaining what a scam FTX was. And he's banging a drum. No, it's not. No, uh-uh. No, I, you obviously don't understand the technology. We just had a damn thing last week and you had members of Congress who were crying out loud, going out of their way to talk about the wonders of crypto. It's wonderful them because they want to make money or their families making money in some way, shape, manner, or form. They're connected to this stuff. You want to go back to Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff, you know what it types of charities that he donated to and the types of politicians that he was connected to. Chuck Schumer is a pretty powerful guy. Frank Lautenberg was a pretty powerful senator. They both were. They, Chuck still is. Your, your SEC is going to look into Bernie Madoff, even though everything was laid out in front of you that it was a complete ripoff? Uh-huh. I don't want to get a phone call from Chuck Schumer's office. There's no sheriff. Do you understand? After the fact, after the fact, these, they, 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 these regulators come in and they collect a fine. And if you're small potatoes out there, guess what? You might do some jail time. You might do some bail time or, or it's so egregious. It's a Bernie Madoff type of scenario. But you can go through, you can take a look at the things that the big investment houses had done, going back to the dot-coms, Great Recession, all that stuff. Anybody doing any jail time? No, 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 no. It's a parking ticket. Do you understand? They pay a fine. The big firms pay a fine. There you go. They paid their parking ticket. You want to compare it to something? Okay, I'll compare it to this. A <laughs> family, family, uh, one of the biggest... Um, that I know, one of the biggest produce suppliers in New York City. They also own a fantastic Italian grocery store in the city and out here on Long Island. They have a lot of deliveries, a lot of deliveries, a lot of delivery trucks, meaning what? They get a lot of tickets, double park truck, whatever it may be, ticket, 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 ticket. They go down at the end of the year and they pay their parking tickets. They cut a deal with the government. And believe me, they're also sending food baskets down there, 
all the time on a regular basis. It's a cost of doing business. They price those parking tickets into the produce that they're selling. That's just how the world works. You know, these firms do the same thing. When, when an investment firm, if Goldman Sachs pays a fine, Goldman Sachs pays a fine. Oh, God damn it, Goldman Sachs is paying a fine. Who's paying? Shareholders are paying. Not, not the person that actually did anything wrong or orchestrated the entire thing. The shareholders are paying. A corporation is a tax ID number and a logo. A corporation by itself, okay, a filing, a filing in Delaware somewhere, cannot go and rip people off. Can't do it. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Quick bit here on taxes. Saw this. The state of New York is starting to worry. You're running out of COVID bucks. Running out of those magical COVID bucks and tax revenues are dropping. Yes, they are. And it's not just New York. It's all around the country as well. Again, you know, a lot of these capital gains uh, revenues not going to be coming in like they had in the past this year with the markets uh, being down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now what to do? Again, um, did they did they plan or put money away just in case something like this would inevitably happen? No, of course not. Spend it all. Spend it all. It was funny. He actually had the, um, the mayor of New York lash out against some of the uh, progressives in the New York State legislature because we mentioned here on the program last week, all of the New Yorkers that are leaving, the high net worth uh, people are leaving. Even the mayor of New York, who I've called the clown on, on multiple occasions, got this one right. He's like 2% of taxpayers are making up the bulk of the taxes being paid. I forget the exact amount, but it's almost the entirety. And you got some progressive lawmakers saying, good, let them leave. And he actually says, no, no, I don't want my best customers to leave. That's just stupid. But again, um, those are leftists and they're not very bright. All right. Um, I want to touch on this. Again, I, this, this topic came up, this topic came up when I was on uh, Fox Business a few times ago and you, you had, and I didn't get a chance to chime in. You know, I can't always, i me tell you how it works, insider baseball. Um, when I'm not on camera and if there's a certain topic where I'm allowed to chime in, I kind of like wave and the producer behind the door somewhere, the, you know, like Oz and the rest of them, if they see it, if they try to get you in, if you can. But anyway, sometimes when you have politicians, they don't want you to ask questions. They only want, in this case, Maria Bartiromo to ask questions. So anyway, um, I forget who it was. And they're like talking about, we need to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. We need to impeach him. We need to get rid of him. Look at the crisis on the border. And I'm thinking to myself, these are Republicans that are saying this shit. Again, dumb as a box of rocks. Oh, either that. No, I got to get my, I got to get on a, on Fox and throw some bombs so I look good to my constituents. Dude, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas can't go and take a leak without Joe Biden's approval. You, you do understand that, right? He, he has no power. He has no authority. He does what his boss tells him to do. So what the flippity, flippity, flippity flop? Trying to cut down on my curse words. <laughs> what in the world, okay, is going to happen if you waste my freaking time, my fellow taxpayers' freaking time by impeaching my orcas. He's just going to get replaced with somebody else that's going to do what Joe Biden tells him or her to do. You do understand that, right? Yeah, Joe Biden can get rid of any of them at any point in time if he doesn't like. Let me give you an example. Give an example of this. I thought about it today. This is under the uh, uh, George W. Bush administration. 
Okay. George W. Bush had a unbelievable treasury secretary. Anybody remember Paul O'Neill? Paul O'Neill, he, oof, he ran Alcoa. And if you actually take a look at his tenure at Alcoa, what he did there, Pittsburgh, a base company, the type of revenue growth, earnings growth that saw over, over his tenure, then was over at the Rand Corporation. He actually helped run the country when Nixon was going into the whole impeachment shindig. But anyway, neither here nor there, okay? Paul O'Neill, Paul O'Neill was a fiscal conservative, a true fiscal conservative. So uh, Bush and Cheney had to get rid of him. Again, mind you, he was Treasury Secretary through 9-11, helped handle all of the situations and the things that were taking place at that point in time. He lasted a year. Why? Because Bush and Cheney wanted to spend money. Yeah, he actually also talked about how when he first got into office, they were planning the war in Iraq before 9-11. Which is true, which they were doing. We didn't know this. He did. And guess what? He went public. He didn't agree with the Bush administration. And he let his conscience be heard, which is what each and every one of us should do in all circumstances. Get into that in a bit. And he was fired. Um, and I, I thought about that today. I said, I, I don't know what Alejandro Mayorkas, I, I don't know what he really believes in. Um, but um, I, I wish you had more government officials, member, cabinet members say, hey, listen, you know what? I resign. I'm out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Um, always, people, always go with your conscience. Okay. You ever notice, ever think about that? I, I was thinking about it today. I said early on in my career, I was new on Wall Street, and I didn't really know what I was doing, didn't really understand something. But there was like a little thing in the back of my mind saying, I don't know, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like the right thing. And I ignored it. I ignored it. And those are the, th those are the things you look back in life and say, you know what? I regret. I regret not opening my mouth. I regret not leaving sooner. And, you know, it, you can make excuses. But, you, you know, your, your conscience will tell you, okay? Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. It's it just that simple. You, you got these guys here, now these members of Congress, they're all, oh, we're going to get rid of this one. We're going to get rid of this. What the hell good is that going to do? Nothing. And it's too bad that we, you know, again, you get these people in positions of power. You know, they like their position of power. Okay? They, they weigh in their mind. They can just, the people who can justify in their mind evil so they can be comfortable or they can continue to be in the Washington, D.C. circuit. Or they don't, they're concerned about whether or not they're going to get a job on K Street if they go against the Biden administration. They might be exiled from uh, the watchdog on Wall Street axis of evil, big business politicians in the mainstream media. Hey, people, it's how it works. I mean, we're talking about the Twitter files and stuff like that. Oh, Twitter, you know, his staff with were ex-Obama staffers getting paid well because that's what they do. They take care of one another. They get the equivalent of no-show jobs for the rest of their lives, taking big paychecks. Anyway, have a, uh, have a great day, everybody. Watchdogonwallstreet.com. Watchdogonwallstreet.com is our site. We'll see you.